This PowerPoint is on the uh, chapter 4.1 from your Visions textbooks. Um, we're going to look at specific types of events. In this PowerPoint, we're going to cover more about the andors of probability. We're going to see what a Venn diagram is. We're going to talk about what an intersection and a union is in terms of probability, mutually and non-mutually exclusive events, and finally, independent and dependent events. Let's understand more about the andors of probability. We're going to use a lot of different, uh, a lot of the same, sorry, types of examples. Usually, when we're talking about things like this, it's easier to use things like dice, cards, and um, heads or tails. So, for this example, we're going to take a six-sided die whose faces are numbered one to six. The word "and" means that it satisfies both events at the same time. For example, obtaining a number that is even and prime. So we want both of these things, even and prime, at the exact same time. The word or means that each event satisfies one or both of the characteristic stating, so one or the other. For example, obtaining a number that is even or prime means any even or any prime. Logically, if we use our common sense, we can deduce that the events or have way more outcomes than the events with and. We're going to change it up a little because as we become more and more advanced in our learning of probability, we're going to become a little bit more mathematical and we're going to change the way we say the words and and or. So you know the word and, you also know it as a multiplication. Uh, we're going to now call it an intersection and the symbol for this is an upside down U. Same thing for the word or. Instead of saying or or instead of using it in writing or, we're going to call it a union and we are going to use the symbol um, U for union. The reason why we're doing this is because it becomes a little bit more easier for people to use and to graphically show um, certain probabilities. And so by using the words union and intersection, we can understand a little bit more how the events are. So one of the ways that we're going to show the union and intersection is by graphically representing it using a Venn diagram. This is what a Venn diagram looks like. Essentially, it's two circles interlaced, where you could guess that in the middle, it's what's common to both of these circles. In the case of probability, each circle in a Venn diagram represents one event. So in this PowerPoint, you'll see that we're going to be talking more about two events together and not so much separately whether they are the and or the ors of these events. A Venn diagram is a type of graph that allows you to visually see outcomes in two different events. So you can actually see what the outcomes are and how they are interlaced with one another. So the, remember, as I said, the overlapping part of the Venn diagram will contain outcomes that are common to both of the events. So this is what the middle would be. So everything that the first event and the second event have in common. Next slide will have a really good example for you. So how exactly does this work? We're going to take, in this case, a 10-sided die whose faces are numbered from 1 to 10. Below are two possible events. Event A is obtaining a number greater than 5, and event B is obtaining an even number. Without drawing a diagram, you can figure out that the omega for these two situations together is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So all of the different choices that we can get from rolling this die. We're going to make a Venn diagram by calling both of the circles event A and event B. In this case, we can list all of the outcomes for event A. Obtaining a number greater than 5, 7, 6, 8, 9, and 10. 5 is also, 5 is, sorry, is not an option because we want a number that is greater than 5, not equal to 5. So these are all the outcomes that make event A true. We're going to make a second circle. We're going to call it event B, and we're going to list all the numbers that make event B true. Obtaining an even number, rolling this type of die, we have 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. The numbers that we haven't yet put in here because they don't belong in these events are 5, 3, and 1. So as you can see, you can see some of the numbers that are common to both 6, 8, and 10 are common to both. This is the and. 7, 9, and 4, and 2 are only common to, the, to each event. And 
outcomes 5, 3, and 1 are not common to any of these events. So we call these the outliers of our Venn diagram, but we still have to put them. So the intersection of two sets A and B is composed of elements common to both sets. So this is the and part, but the reason why we call it an intersection is because it's literally where the two events intersect. This is the and. If we were to do event A and B, it would be the intersection of our Venn diagram. So we would say that A intersecting B is equal to 6, 8, and 10, these three outcomes, because they are common to both event A and B. The union of two sets, A or B, written A union B, is composed of all the elements in both sets. So in this case, it would be everything in this circle or everything in this circle. So whatever is shaded is the union. Where do the two circles come together? And it, we would write it as A union B is equal to in curly brackets 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This we would call literally the union of the two events. The two events, both circles coming together to form one union. From the last PowerPoint, we looked at something called compatible and incompatible events. We say that a, events A and B are compatible if they occur at the same time. For example, if you roll a six-sided die, the events rolling an even number and rolling a number greater than three are compatible events because you can roll a four or a six. These are two events that we can have an outcome that basically makes both true. We call events A and B incompatible if they cannot occur at the same time. Forget about that we write this as. In this case, we're going to just talk about the fact that rolling a six-sided die again, we have events rolling a multiple of five and rolling a number less than four. You cannot do both. You can either roll a multiple of five or you can roll a number less than four, but you cannot do both at the same time. So they're called incompatible. Now, like we were, like we were with the uh, wording of and and or, we're going to be a little bit more mathematical when it comes to our wording for compatible and incompatible events. We're going to change incompatible to the word mutually exclusive, and we're going to change the word compatible to non-mutually exclusive. So when something is incompatible, we're going to say that it's mutually exclusive. And when something is compatible, compatible, we're going to say that it's non-mutually exclusive. So we're going to look more in depth at mutually exclusive events. Um, they cannot occur at the same time. And if you remember from the last slide, mutually exclusive events is another way of saying incompatible. Let's roll a six-sided die. We're going to get two events obtaining a number less than 3 and obtaining a number greater than 4. Now think of it. Can you get these two at the same time? Well, if you're not entirely sure, you can draw a Venn diagram. You can have one circle for event A and one circle for event B. And as you can see, this here is the only outcomes, 1 and 2, for rolling a number less than 3. And here is the only two outcomes for rolling a number greater than 4. And on the outside here, we have the two numbers that don't really go into any of these events. So over here, there's nothing that make these two together true. There's no intersection that makes this true. So because of it, we call this the empty set. This, this O with the line through it is called an empty set. Or if we write it more mathematically, we see that A intersect B is equal to the empty set, meaning there is nothing, there's nothing in the intersection. There is no way that A intersect B gives us any outcomes because they are incompatible or mutually exclusive. We could call the probability of these two events, we write it as the probability of A union B, so A with B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B, and here we have 2 out of 6 plus 2 out of 6, which is equal to 4 out of 6 or 2 out of 3. Now we're going to look at non-mutually exclusive events where, as you know, the more common word is compatible. They can occur at the same time. We're going to roll a six-sided die again, and I'm going to give you two events. Event C, obtaining an even number, and event D, obtaining a factor of six. Now, you should know that it's possible to obtain something like this together. So if we talk about obtaining an even number, we know that on a die, you have two, four, six. And if we obtain a factor of six, the factors of six are one, two, three, and six. So if we put this together in our Venn diagram, we see that there's a difference between the mutually exclusive events. We got something in the intersection. And not to forget that our 5 is the only number that doesn't make sense in either of these events, so it's our outlier. In this case, 
there is something in the intersection. So there is no empty set. So we say that C intersect D does not equal to the empty set because there is something in the middle, 2 and 6. Now let's look in even forth further in the probability of these events, okay? So in this case, you have something on one end and you have something on the other end. You have 4 and you have 3 and 1. But you also got this 2 and 6 that are common to both. So if we count it two times, it's going to not be right. We only want to count this once. So we write that the probability of C union D, so the probability of these two, two events happening, is equal to the probability of C here plus the probability of D, but we have to subtract this intersection because we don't want to count it two times. We only want to count it once. So we have to remove it so that it is only there one time. So we would have 3 over 6 for event C, and then 4 over 6 for event C, for event D, and we're going to subtract the intersection 2 over 6. And in the end, we're left with 5 over 6. And that's how you calculate the probability of non-mutually exclusive events. And this is also why Venn diagrams can be very, very useful to you. Our last subject is independent and dependent events. Two events A and B are independent if one event does not influence the probability of another. Two events A and B are dependent if one event influences the probability of the other. They give it in terms of how we use just the words independent and, dep and dependent in everyday life. When something is independent, it, it's on its own. It doesn't need the other. When something is dependent, it actually does need the other, and the outcome of one affects the outcome of the other. Here's an example of an independent event. Again, we're going to have a six-sided die numbered one to six, and we're going to roll it twice. We're going to have two events, obtaining four on the first roll and obtaining a three on the second roll, and we're going to talk about the probabilities of these two events. These events are independent because they don't change the probability of each other. The probability of this event is A intersect B, so it's going to be probability of A and B. We're going to be multiplying, so we're going to have 1 over 6 times 1 over 6. It doesn't matter what I do on the first roll or on the second roll. Nothing is, nothing is dependent on the other. 1 out of 6 times 1 out of 6 is 1 out of 36. But for a dependent event, I'm going to give you the example where two marbles are drawn without replacement. So we're taking one and we're not putting it back from a jar containing 49 marbles, numbered 1 to 49. Two events are given to you, event C, obtaining a marble 7 on the first draw, and probably probability of event D is obtaining a marble 5 on the second draw. These events are dependent because depending on what you draw first without a replacement will affect the probability of the second draw. And you should know this by now. When you pick a marble and you don't put it back, it changes the probability of your second draw because you're one less than the first draw. So in this case, the probability of C intersecting D is equal to 1 over 49 for drawing the first marble multiplied by 1 out of 48 because we didn't put it back. So because it's dependent on the other, it changes the probability, and these are dependent events. And the answer for this one is 1 out of 2,352. 2, that is the end of 4.1 4, 4 events from your Visions textbook, where we covered the and, ors, mutually and non-mutually exclusive events, independent and dependent events. Up next, we're going to learn about conditional probability.